Straight to questions. Okay, we are ready to begin. We will start with questions. Please raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. We'll start right here while they get the mic fixed. Hey, John, I want to ask you a question about Kentucky. Uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I mean, you've obviously had a lot of talented freshmen year after year, but you got a really big class now. What, what's that been like? And as you get older, how, how do you deal with that? Well, we've got, we got some good veterans uh, that have really gotten better. We've got a good group of young players that I'm excited about, and they've got great attitudes. They've got a toughness to them. Uh, the biggest issue you have with young guys a lot of times is they, they don't understand that dogs stand out if you you got some dog in you. And this team, our practices have been competitive. And the issue we're having right now is we've got two of our big guys, two seven-footers that are going to be out a little while longer. So we've had to do what we've done without that. And, uh, but they've responded. They responded. James Fletcher from On3. You had multiple kind of uh, roster building sagas throughout the summer, um, guys who were in the what, transfer. What, what do you mean throughout the summer? What happened? Well, you had um, Big Z, obviously, getting him enrolled. You had Trey Mitchell transferring late after a situation at his previous school. You had um, Onyenso, who uh, went into the portal and came back out. Who did? Ugo? Yes. Okay. I don't remember that, but he probably did. Yes. So... You have a lot going on in roster building. What's the difference in college basketball now, building a roster versus how it was before? It's so late in the process now. And how did you end up with a top 25 team with all that going on? Well, everybody's going through the same thing. I mean, you had teams that had eight and nine players, you know, late in the, the summer. And so we're all going through the same thing. And, uh, um, you know, the one thing that's happened to everybody right now is new teams. Like, they got seven and eight new guys. Um, and I've been through that once or twice in my career. And it is – it's exciting because it's so new to you as a head coach and to them. But it's also difficult to get them to come together. How quickly can you do it? And we're all battling the same thing now. I don't know of any co – well, there, we've got a couple in our league that have teams back. Uh, and they have a big advantage, uh, and they should. They got a bunch of guys back. But, yeah, the reality of it is we had a good group coming in. Um, um, the guys that we, we got late, and I say late, uh, were good players and were adding to our team. Uh, ben Roberts, Lexington Herald Leader. You mentioned Ugo and Bradshaw. You said five to six weeks last week. Is, is that? I should never do that because <laughs> all of a sudden it was nine weeks. It means that they're ready for the NCAA tournament. Look, he, they're, uh, they're on the right path, both of them. Uh, Ugo's a little bit behind Aaron because of the timing of his injury and the surgery. Um, but they're both progressing really good and we'll learn something each week about where they are. I don't want to put a date or a time on it because what if they're earlier? How about this one? What if it takes them more time than we thought? It does. So, but they'll, they'll both be fine. Those are surgeries and injuries that are pretty common. Um, so I feel good and they've got great attitudes, both of them. And, Here's the other thing. They both gained weight. They both got stronger because they could not jump around and do that. But now, all of a sudden, you look at Ugo and you look at Aaron, and physically, they probably both gained 20, 25 pounds of muscle weight. It, is it safe to say you expect one or both those guys to miss the start of the regular season? And then how, how much, aside I don't from know. the, the I, physical yeah. development, how much missing the basketball development this summer hurts those Oh, it'll, it'll affect them. I don't know. If they're both back or both not back, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that'll take time. That's, you know, you, you weren't jumping. Now all of a sudden you're jumping. You're, you were shooting shots and free throws without ever leaving your feet. Now you have to do it. So it'll take time. But I think they're both, they're both really talented. Um, they've got good skills. So 
It's the, the bump and grind of the game that they're, they're not seeing. I guess one more since I still have the microphone. Uh, uh, Trey Mitchell. Uh, Anybody how, else want to ask me a question or no? How, Go ahead. How, how beneficial was it to get him in general, but now knowing you have those bigs out, how big was that? It was, look, you know, I wish what happened at West Virginia did not happen. Um, you know, but we were the beneficiary of it, but it wasn't planned. It wasn't, you're talking about all happening within a week. And, um, but you'll have to talk to Trey. I mean, he had a great relationship with uh, Bob. He loved him. And uh, it's unfortunate, but, you know, it's good for us. And I think, again, uh, my hope is that he's able to do some stuff and be seen in a way um, that helps him too. Kyle Tucker with the athletic count. I know it was kind of an ordeal getting Big Z into school. Now that now that he's there with you guys, are there any hurdles left for NCAA eligibility with him? And then the other part of that is well, the academic hurdles are done. Um, he's done well with that stuff. It was that was done well in advance. The normal procedure when he shows up on campus, they go through the other stuff, uh, which is eligibility and all that. But Knowing that he played on a development team and the club he was in and all that, I feel good. But they got to go through the process of doing it. They'll ask questions and, and all that. And, and then when I got in his company and he does not shave, like he looks about 15 versus, you know, so he's a young player, 19. He just turned 20. He's 23 weeks ago, four weeks ago, whatever it was. Um, so I think he'll be in good shape, but he's got to go through the process like every other foreign student would go through. To that, to that point you made about how young he is and just getting here, how soon and how much is it fair to expect that he can help you guys? Well, because it took so long to get him here, every week that went by he got better and better and bigger and a bigger impact. And, oh, my gosh, he's King Kong. And, and all of a sudden, each week that went by, he got better and better. He's a piece to the puzzle for us. He's seven foot two, he's pretty skilled, but he's just gonna start contact in tonight's practice. So if you think that he's ready to walk in and you dominate a game, you're not, you're not thinking right, he's not. But great kid, smart, all that we've done to this point, five on O, four on O stuff, some of the defensive stuff, he's, he already has a good feel. Recently, it was announced that the, uh, the Indiana series is coming back. Is from your perspective, what was the process of you know, negotiating to have that come back and, and, and the format that, that it ended up being? You know, Mike and I talked, and you know, um, wanted to do it, and um, you know, we had to move it back because our schedule. You know, we have one of the toughest schedules in the country every year, so we moved it out a little bit, um, but you know. I think it's good for both programs and excited to get started with it. C.L. Brown, Louisville Courier Journal. Right here. Um, for a lot of years, UK has kind of been the, the flag bearer for the conference in basketball, but now it seems like you got a lot of company. What would you say has kind of been uh, the, the biggest reasons for the rise as the SEC as a basketball conference? I made this statement um, probably, well, I've made it for years. Um, they, they asked me, what's happened in basketball in the SEC? And I've said basketball coaches win games, administrations win championships. And what's happened here, all these schools have invested in men's basketball and women's basketball. They've invested in facilities. They've invested in arenas and coaches' salaries and recruiting and all the stuff that you need to be good. I've been a benefactor when I was at UMass, Memphis, and here. Um, we all know the commitment and what basketball means to the state of Kentucky. So I've been a benefactor. What's happened now, Jimmy Dyke said, it was two or three teams when you first got in the league. Now there's nine or 10 or 11. I said, yeah, because the schools are committed to it. And they're committed to this. And uh, it makes every game a hard game. I mean, arenas are packed. Uh, players are getting drafted. Um, and it's not just our players. Now you got other schools having draft picks, so it's uh, it's an exciting time uh, in the SEC. Zach Gagan with Kentucky Sports Radio. Howard, a couple of years into the NIL era now, just what do you think has the 
biggest issue with the NIL space right now? And kind of on that, do you think that donor-led collectives need to be maybe moved under the university umbrella or anything like that? How much time do I have to talk about this kind of stuff? I'll, I'll just say, um, um, we, we need guardrails and all that stuff. I think young people, they deserved to share in what's happening. They deserve their name on the back of their jersey, their signature, their autograph. Um, they deserve that. But it's kind of gone beyond that now, and it's different. It's um, the one thing I'm happy about. Some of our players coming in, um, they already have deals before they get to our campus for trading cards, shoe deals, all this. And so there's not as much pressure for us to have to do X, Y, Z. And I, I tell every kid we're recruiting, if, you're, if, it, if it's about NIL more than basketball, you shouldn't come here. You know, th this, you're trying to, the big picture of where you're trying to take yourself. Basketball should be the overriding factor. Even though you'll do better here than any other place you can go, it's not why you come to Kentucky. The transfer portal is another issue. I, my suggestion, no, and again, I've said this before here, no one listens to me. My wife doesn't listen. I yell to the dog, he runs the other way. So no one listens to me as I tell you this. But in the old days, you had five years to play four. You had five years. Within that five years, if you want to transfer without penalty, you can. One time. If you had any other issues, you know, families, stuff, uh, mental health, you, you take the year off to get yourself together, and then you play. But you have five years. We don't want to have 28-year-olds playing against 18-year-olds. I'm basically telling you what they do in high school. You get so many semesters, and you're done. You can't have a 15-year-old playing against a 21-year-old. It's the same thing, and it's what I think we should do. But again, no one listens to me. The name, image, and likeness, my suggestion has been just let's make it uh, transparent. So every school's got to say what their kids are doing, not by name because of HIPAA rules, but by number, whatever you want to do collectively, here's what we're doing. And now we all know the truth about what's going on, and if you don't do it, your coach got to sit out a year. In other words, if you're hiding stuff or you're trying to do other stuff, you got to sit out. So those are some things that I think we can do um, to try to alleviate what we're all dealing with. But that's just me. That's not, I'm not talking on behalf of our university. I'm not talking on behalf of the SEC. You asked me a question, and I answered it. Forrest Tucker with ABC 36 in Lexington. Since you guys won the Global Jam back a few months ago, how's the team developed on the court with tactics, your style of play, and then obviously you have some newcomers in that have meshed and everything like that. How's all that going? Very good. I mean, the, the good news is some of the guys came back knowing that they were going to have to elevate their game, elevate their weight training and all that, and it happened. What well, we found out that we have a group of guys all for each other, and that's been great. Um, and we know we have a pretty good team, but we need to add some length and some rim protection. If we're going to be a real, that real group that can do something crazy, you've got to have rim protection, and I think we'll have it in due time. Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, Johnny Thornton, Game Day Weekly. Uh, talk about uh, the SEC, ACC challenge, and especially your matchup with the University of Miami. Uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, we had a good thing with the, the Big 12, and now with the ACC, I think it's great for both leagues. Um, our game with Miami is going to be really, really hard. Jim Laranega and I are good friends. Um, he said, you know, again, why were your fans disappointed it was Miami? I said, don't even go there. Or, no. Um, so Miami is going to be a really hard game for us. Again, veterans against young players be a hard game um, but you know it's a good good thing for both leagues and uh, you know happy to be a part of it not really but I'll say that for everybody yeah uh, Ryan Black here with the Courier Journal uh, you know Kyle you got a couple of uh, new assistants here uh, on your staff with John Welch and Chuck Morton I wanted to kind of just know what have they brought to the staff so far well um, Chuck was on my staff when we were at Memphis and, and moved on and did some good stuff and as a head coach and an assistant. 
um, and brought him back. Um, his son goes to Kentucky, so it was kind of easy. He wanted to do it, and he's going to be tremendous for us. And it's already had an impact on our recruiting. 24 is looking really good. 25 is even looking better. So it's, it's going to have an impact. Um, and then um, Johnny Welsh um, had a 17-year run in the NBA, but I've known him for 20-some years. As a matter of fact, helped me put in the dribble drive with Vance Wahlberg when I was at Memphis and came in and helped us and really organize it. And um, I just said, hey, we're allowed to have you on the court. You want to come back and you want to get into college? I had had his son on the, my staff as a GA. His son graduated. He's now in the, in the G League doing some uh, stuff for, I think, Denver. And uh, so he came back and he's been tremendous. He's a you know, he's a guy that loves to teach, loves to be in the gym with the players, and um, that's what I wanted him to be, that guy. And I also want to ask, I know these two guys maybe didn't get as much attention on the recruiting trail uh, as some of the other freshmen, but just what are your sense of what maybe Jordan Burks and Joey Hart can bring to this year's team? They're, they're I'll tell you, both of them, um, Jordan especially. Jordan went through pro day, and that's all the other scouts were talking about is Jordan Burks. They didn't know about him. They heard all this stuff, he's only this, he's only that. Well, they never saw him play. Then they saw him play. They were talking more about him than anybody on my roster. And Joey um, can really shoot the ball. So there's always a place for a guy that can make shots. He did the dunking contest, but let me tell you, he was, you're in front of 17,000 and you go do the first dunk. And instead of jumping up, you jump down. And I knew, I looked at him and I said, what, what? He said, I couldn't breathe. I said, what do you mean? I literally could not breathe. So I ran in, no breath, and I couldn't. And then he got a little more comfortable and a little more, less anxious. And he ended up having the, you know, the dunk and the players went great. It was great to see it, the response from all our guys. Uh, yeah, coach, uh, my name's Olin Buchanan with texags.com. Uh, my question is, um, Historically, Texas A&M has not been on a level with the teams like yourself and some of the top teams in the SEC. From your perspective, how close do you think Texas A&M is to being that caliber? Geez, team? It, it probably the team that will be picked to win the whole league. Um, you know, they've got a lot of guys back. They were terrific last year. They are physical. Um, they defend. Uh, they run good stuff. I would say – Coming back, it would be A&M being one of those one or two teams that should uh, be favored. Let me, let me say this, and again, I'm, this is with all due respect, A&M is terrific. You know, I love their, uh, what they do. But it's so hard right now to project. It's never been this hard. So you can project anybody you want. Even last year, all the teams that were projected, no, and the teams not projected, yes. And now everybody's in the same boat. Well, he's got that transfer and that transfer. You're seeing it in football. There's some guys that you thought would be this, and they're not because they transferred. So it is so hard for anyone. Um, somebody wants to say, my team is really good. and real How do you know that? Like, we're counting on guys that never played college basketball. Why would you say that? Um, or you want to say, well, they're not any good. Why are you saying that? Have you been at practice? Do you know something I don't know? So it's just harder for all of them. But if you're A&M and you got people back, Buzz should be walking around with a smile. Like, I got everybody back, so let's go. Let's see what happens. Coach, Scotty Bordelon, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, Arkansas signed L. Ellis from Louisville um, earlier this year. I'm curious what you remember about him from – Maybe prepping for him last year? Yeah, he's really good. They got a good player. He can get his own shot. He had, does it with uh, distance. He can get to the rim. Um, he could, you could play through him. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Jared Redding inside the Rebels on 24-7 Sports. Obviously, there's a new coach in the conference now and Chris Beard. So, first off, what's your familiarity with Chris? And I know it's been a while since you've been a first – uh, your coach in the SEC, but what do you envision some of the biggest challenges are for you know coaches despite what they've done to Ford to enter the conference and succeed right away? 
Um, we played against one of Chris's teams at uh, Texas Tech, and they were ridiculously hard to guard. Um, defensively, we're tough. Uh, I know how good he is, and my guess is they're, they'll walk in the league. When you have those as staples, you're not going to be far behind, even if you're just getting started. So um, what he will find out, that these are really hard games. This is now, you know, 10, 11 teams that are doing that kind of stuff. Um, and it's going to be hard, but he's good. He's good at what he does. I saw him. He looked happy. And, you know, I think we're all happy right now because none of us have lost a game yet. So we're so happy. Um, but he's good at what he does, and uh, he'll, uh, he'll do fine. Hallie DeVore, ABC 36 in Lexington. A lot of question, obviously, about your young talent. Can you just talk a little bit about your veterans and what they are bringing, you know, leadership-wise this year? Yeah, and, and again, like I'll give you an example. Um, Adu is so much better than he was a year ago. It's not even close, both physically, skill-wise, um, less anxious because he knows what to expect. I could say the same with Antonio. Antonio Reeves was not sure. He came from Illinois State. You're walking in, it's Kentucky. Every shot is life and death. And now you watch him, sure of himself, no anxiety, talks more. Uh, Trey gives you a veteran that can really, really play basketball. Ugo's been hurt. Um, you know, that when you talk about those guys, um, you know, we, we, everybody else is young. So everybody else is 18, 19 or years old, the rest of the team. But I'm not complaining. I love the group. I love walking into practice every day. They want to get better. They're coachable. Um, and we're talented. We're just young. Coach, you talked about Antonio Reeves uh, having to get comfortable last season. A lot of high major teams, as the transfer portal becomes a more popular option to build a roster, are relying on those jumps from mid-major players. What did you see as one of the biggest keys to him making that jump and having that? It took him a while. It took him a while. It was until mid-season where he started busting through. And the game at uh, Mississippi, the game at Arkansas, where he just, you could play through him like the whole game. It takes time. Um, and then you know, coming back, you just see a different player um, who's putting himself and our team in a different position. But he's, it's hard for young, a player from a mid-major to go in this league and say, I'm going to just go and dominate this league. It's hard. Thank you. Kentucky players will now be at the podium. Our next one will be at 1245 with Texas A&M coach Buzz Williams.